um, when I was shuffling out the spread for you, um, I saw this image. Um, so I'm looking at this guy. He's probably in his, I don't know, 30s, 40s. And he's at a blackjack table. So he's sort of like right here facing me. And it seems almost like I'm looking through the perspective of a blackjack dealer. And um, I'm not familiar with card games, but I believe that's the game where you have to, you know, all the cards have to ma um, add up to 21. And you want to get closest to 21, as close to tw the, the number 21 as possible. And you're playing, you're betting, and you're playing against the dealer pretty much. And I see this man, he's got like already four cards that are in front of him. And he's saying like, hit me. And then the, the, the dealer gives him another card. And it's, uh, it's still a small card. It might have been a three or a four that was dealt. And in, then he says, hit me again. And he says it again. So when I saw this image, I, I immediately thought that you're taking a big chance. You're taking a big risk because you feel like the gamble is worth it. It's almost like you're calling somebody's bluff or you are doing something where there are a lot of risk involved, but there's also a huge payout involved as well. So you're kind of weighing out, you know, these options. Like if I don't do it, I've got, I, I would have gained nothing. But I've, if I do do it, you know, there might be a little bit of a loss if I lose, but I could win really, really big if I do it. So if I take this risk, it will really pay out for me. So that's what it feels like. But the weird thing is, I didn't see any chips on the table. I didn't see any um, type of money being exchanged. So I don't feel like this is a monetary risk. I just don't get that element. But for some of you, it very well could be a, a risky, like a financially risky endeavor that you're undertaking. But I just feel like this is something a little bit more from the heart, which is, you know, a gamble on relationships, a gamble on love, a gamble on something that you feel deep down. It, it's, it's almost like calling somebody else's bluff. OK. Um, so when I translate that message into the cards, um, some of the th things that I'm picking up here is um, there's definitely communication between you and another person. And I feel like the communication has to be very, very, very well thought out. And the communication has to be very tact. So it's almost like you're sitting there trying to communicate with another person. And I, I almost feel like this element, you guys are naturally very cautious to begin with. And I, I literally see like somebody typing an email or texting and spending a lot of time making sure that the wording is just perfect. Spending a lot of time making sure that, you know, you everything is spelled out correctly, everything is grammatically correct, that there are correct punctuations, there are correct uh, numbers and figures and, and things like that. So there is something that you're doing very meticulously, that you're you're doing with the utmost care because somebody else is going to review it or somebody else is going to read it. So I, I feel almost like this uh, element about, you know, wanting to communicate with somebody, uh, measuring your words, weighing out the word choice, weighing out what you're going to say and, and being extra careful about how you come across and how the other person is going to receive your message. It's almost like wondering, is this the, the right uh, tone that I should use? Is this the right way in which I should communicate? Am I getting my point across? So you're really reassessing this, this piece of communication that you're sending off to somebody. And um, what I feel here, we do have, let me see. We do have two people that you're dealing heavily with for this week. I have here the King of Swords. So this is an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And then I have the Queen of Cups, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. So these two figures will be very, very prominent in your life for, for this week at least. 
And what I feel is um, there is somebody that is, um, they come across almost like they're always analyzing things. They're, they're, they might tend to overanalyze and they might, you know, they're, they're very intelligent, but I, I almost feel like they, they're a little bit more on the pessimistic end, okay? They're sort of like, oh, it's not going to work out. We should have a plan B. So in a way, they're very cautious as well, but I feel like they err a little bit more on the op uh, the pessimistic end. And so they don't really do anything rushing right in. They're not impulsive. They take their time whenever they're confronted with a problem, whenever they're confronted with a crossroads, or whenever they communicate. So I feel like they're very measured, very methodical, and ex extremely, extremely like analytical. And they could read something and analyze it to death. Or they could like look at one situation and come up with like multiple scenarios where things can potentially play out or where things can potentially go right or where things can potentially go wrong. So I feel like this is almost like a strategist. It's somebody that has a lot of insights, a lot of foresight. And also they, they plan for every possible scenario. And so when you're dealing with this person, I feel almost like they're giving you a lot of different scenarios for you to mull over, for you to analyze. And, and, and I feel like in a way, dealing with them can be very refreshing for you because I feel like a lot of the times you guys do, you know, get um, really stuck. Um, it's, it's almost like that tunnel vision. You know, you want to have things a certain way. And especially when you have an emotional pull towards something, it's almost like you trust your intuition so much that you're like, nothing can go wrong. My intuition is really pulling me in this direction. So I feel like that's where I'm meant to go. Okay. And this is you going for something. This is the Knight of Cups. And I feel like this is more your energy going passionately towards something, seeing something that you, you like, it triggers your senses. And you're just like, that's it. My intuition, my heart is telling me to go this way. There's nothing here that indicates otherwise. So I'm going to go for it. But I feel like this person is telling you, yeah, but if you do this, there are all these other things that you have to consider. And I almost feel like you deal with things that are in front of you. Whereas this person deals with things almost from like a bird's um, eye view. They're, they're looking at the totality of a situation and they're like, well, if you take that route, you know, further down the line, there's going to be some blockages. Whereas if you take this route, it's a little bit more circuitous. It, um, it, it's not as straightforward, but you can sur circumvent this potential pitfall. So you're dealing with somebody who is like that. And that's why your, your communication has to be very, very methodical and very measured. Um, I feel for some of you, this is almost like a, um, a person that you're trying to please. Okay. So when I say that, I feel like, you know, you care about this person. You're emotionally, you, you there's some type of a, an emotional investment here because honestly, when you don't care about somebody, you don't care how they, you don't care about their opinions. And you don't care how they perceive you. You just don't care. But I feel like you do care. And that's why you do things in such a measured way. Because you want to please this person. And you want to... It, it, it's, it's almost like you respect them. And so their opinions matters a lot to you. Their advice, their counsel, their opinions, whatever they say, it matters a lot to you. So that's what I'm seeing here. And... Um, if it's communication you're waiting on, it's going to take some time. If it's communication that you're waiting on from this person, I feel like it has to take some time. And I'm almost feeling so the senses, okay, the, the senses. It, it's like someone who's, you know, a, this might be a separate message altogether. Um, there is somebody that is really pulling or really appealing to your senses. So they could be, you know, very aesthetically pleasing to look at. Okay. So like you, you might be attracted to them, but I feel like it's a lot more than that. There's something about them that's very unique. And I feel almost like there's something about them that is very nurturing, that is very pure and innocent. And this is what I'm, I'm drawn to this two of cups. 
It's somebody that is not afraid to be vulnerable. It's somebody who's, you know, she's completely naked and she's okay with it. And um, it's almost somebody who's like very, it's like a naturalist, somebody who enjoys the simple things in life. They're not bogged down with status, money, power, prestige. They don't really care about those things. They have more of a heartfelt energy with them. They like simplicity. They like minimalism. They just, um, whatever the normal average person values, this person isn't like that. And so in a way, they, they're they really unique. They're quite independent and they're quite fearless. And I feel like that's why you're really drawn to this person. Um, I almost feel like this person, their their attention is kind of focused elsewhere. That's what it feels like to me. It's like you're charging straight forward to this connection. And I feel almost like their attention is elsewhere. So if this is like somebody who is an ex, if this is somebody who is brand new in the picture, that that is really striking your fancy or you find yourself very attracted to them, I feel like it's going to take a big grand gesture for for this person to be to fall in love. You know, it, it seems like this is not somebody that falls in and out of love easily. It's not somebody that's like that. And so it takes somebody pretty spectacular. It takes something spectacular for to to really capture this person and uh, every time I see birds or I see imagery with wings it's somebody who might be flighty or somebody who might be fickle or somebody who um, who is kind of afraid of commitment okay and so going back to that image where uh, you're at the you know the blackjack table and you're just like hit me and you're calling the the dealers bluff it seems like that to you to, to me where you're just like um, you're, you might be calling somebody else's bluff or you might be, um, you might feel like somebody is, is being false where they're, they're pretending to be a certain way, but deep down they are a different way and they might not even be aware of that, that they're sending out mixed messages, that they're sending out mixed signals, but I feel like you guys can really, you know, you have really keen intuition and you can kind of splice at the truth. And you can, within like five minutes of meeting somebody, really um, analyze them, even without meaning to, you know. You can kind of like sum them up and, and you would be very accurate with your assessment as well. But I just see this situation where it's it's almost like, you might have it in your emotions that they are a specific way. And once you're set, your emotions are set, it's really hard for you to see outside of that framework. And this is true of all fixed signs. Okay, like um, the air signs. So like uh, the, the Aquarius, the Leos, or even the, the Taurus. But with the air signs, once they form their opinions about a certain topic, about a certain stance, about a, a specific person, they don't really change, okay? And then I feel like that's the same way with Taurus. Once they're fixed on a course of action, they don't deviate. And then I feel like, you know, once again, you're at that blackjack table. It seems like you're accumulating a lot of cards and you're taking a huge gamble. And it's almost like, you know, any time now, it's going to be a bust. It's going to exceed that 21 mark but you're willing to, to bet, you're willing to go forward. So it's almost like the, the, the reality of the situation is you kind of need to stop while you're ahead, but then I feel almost like something is telling you to, to keep going. And if this is a work situation, I would say be very, very careful about, you know, trying to do something on your own, um, having somebody to, to kind of step in, especially that strategist that's telling you, wait a minute, you've already like got four or five cards. Anytime now, it's going to be a bust. 
So why don't you quit while you're ahead or let me assist you. Let me give you a different strategy so that you can do it the right way. Okay. So um, a lot of the times too with uh, Scorpios, I, I just feel like, you know, you guys do have uh, a lot of pride and um, I, I feel like, you know, you're, you're generally very independent and very stoic. You, you like to be able to do things on your own. You value self-sufficiency and you do value independence as well. You like to, you know, test your capabilities and you pride yourself on being able to be kind of like that expert in your field. And it's really hard for you to ask for help. It's very, very, I, I rarely, rarely see, um, fix signs asking for help. Okay. And this is not about, you know, throwing yourself a pity party, or this is not about, you know, blindly walking down a path where it's not going to pan out well for you. This is more about being smart, having a strategy. And if we feel like we're in a situation where our blood pressure is rising, where there's a lot of risk involved, maybe you need to consult somebody who might be an expert to be able to give you these um, hints, tips, guidance, counsel. Um, I do see a need for financial planning coming into the picture. So what I have here is the Five of Pentacles. And the Five of Pentacles is, you know, dealing with um, some type of a financial hardship. And then I have as well the Three of Pentacles. So this is sort of like if we're doing this all on our own, the outcome is not looking too great. However, if we enlist the help of other people, it's almost like, you know, one person cannot lift the weight of whatever this is. One person cannot mend a fence. One person cannot do it all alone. Um, you risk injury. You risk accidents. So it's really important to ask for help. It's really important to say, you know what? This is a little bit too burdensome or too heavy for me. I'm going to need you to step in. So, you know, asking for help, asking for assistance. And it could just be a helping hand. It could be financial assistance taking out a loan, for example, or even finding ways so that you can, you know, better manage your financial resources, finding ways in which you can, um, I'm seeing greatly shift money around, shifting money from savings to checking, shifting money from, um, shifting funds around. So I'm, I'm also seeing like retirement pension and things like that so that you can, pay for something, something unexpected. And I also see like uh, needing to do housing repairs, needing to repair fences. Uh, things might have been blown out during the, the, the um, things might have been knocked down. Things might have uh, trickled in. So I, I feel some element here about having to repair some type of a dwelling. And you might need to, you know, uh, dip into your savings account in order to do that. And so a financial advisor, for example, could help you, you know, find money or, or get a loan for a really, really low interest rate or even show you how you can write it off. So I, I feel like there's a need here to consult somebody rather than taking a gamble, rather than, you know, um, sitting there and not looking at the, the all the cards that are on the table for you. Um in the work environment overall, you're getting a lot of love and a lot of support, okay? And I know that sounds weird, but what I feel is um, you're very well received. So the people that are around you, there's a lot of collaboration. There's a lot of like creative problem solving. And I feel like, you know, you, you guys like that. You guys like to solve puzzles. You guys like to figure like you know take things apart and try to figure out how the mechanics work how things fit together so i almost feel like there's a lot of these creative problem solving using using tools or using things for one purpose and then um um it's almost like transferring that thing to a different to to use to a different purpose and it works so there's a lot of creative problem solving there's a lot of like um talking things through with another person and the person can provide you with a lot of insights. Okay. So I feel like it's a very collaborative week and, um, 
it's it's really not indicating to me that you should keep information to yourself or you should try to 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 test your luck and do it on your own because like i said you're getting a lot of love and a lot of support and you're being looked at very very favorably so anybody will be more than willing to come to your rescue to help you to assist you or even to sit down and you know pick your brain so it's really important to you know try not to do it on your own okay um, I don't see a, like a, a very busy energy, but I, I see this sort of like merry-go-around um, when it comes to communication more than anything, when it comes to love, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to communication, it's, it's just this revolving door is what I'm, I'm feeling, this revolving door and, you know, merry-go-arounds, revolving door, all indicate cycles all indicates like a situation that is very monotonous that we want to get off like you, you just want it to end you just want the ride to end so that you can get off and then like try a different ride so there might be a situation where things are a little bit monotonous where things are a little bit dry where things are a little bit uh stale and you might not feel like you your heart is in it anymore and then there's definitely another connection here i feel that's really pulling you in a different direction okay um but i just feel like i just feel like you have to be a lot quicker when you act that's what it seems like to me um what i have here and these are two major arcana cards so let me just talk about them this is the justice and this is the chariot. So both of these are major arcana cards. And what it's saying to me here is uh, when something is right, it doesn't have to feel so hard. Okay. When the balance in a situation, in a work environment, in a relationship, in any type of an interpersonal um, communication, if things are right, despite your differences so so let's just say if you disagree with somebody right um as adults you both can talk about your differences talk about your different beliefs talk about you know all the things that make you different without it being conflictual and so if if things become conflictual and if it's you know coming through from the other person then it's because they're not emotionally mature enough to look at a situation as an adult. So if you disagree with something that they believe in, and then they, they, they take it as a personal attack on their belief system or on them, then it basically means they're not able to detach their ego from you know, their beliefs. And so you might need to kind of look at the maturity level of the person that you're with and try to assess whether or not they're on your same wavelength, okay? So the justice here, the justice card, is all about balance. It's all about recalibrating. And it's all about seeing both sides to the story. And this is, once again, you know, that blackjack um, customer, the, 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 the person at the blackjack table. He, he's got it in his head that I'm going to win big, you know, but then at the same time, seeing both sides of the story, seeing that, you know, the dealer's cards are not revealed. So you might need to look at a situation in a little bit more of a realistic mindset. And you also have to kind of come into this sense of if it's meant to be, it shouldn't be so hard. Okay. I shouldn't have to try so hard to pull things forward on my own. Because I definitely see there's a lot of resistance here with this um, chariot card. And if you're dealing with a cancer even, I feel like this is a very, very caring person. But for whatever reason, there is lack of momentum, lack of progress, or lack of movement in the right direction with this person. Okay, So this could be uh, business, work, colleague, uh, relationship, as well as love relationship. There's lack of consensus. There's lack of like common ideologies. Um, the traditional Rider Waite deck depicts the chariot as two people that are very, very different from each other, and they're trying to move in the same direction. 
And it's strange because this deck is not showing me uh, the two, the horses with two different colors. It's showing the same color and it shows me as well, you potentially could be dealing with another water sign, but for whatever reason, your, your interests, your goals, your, your, com your, um, life path or the things that you're trying to pursue might not be in alignment with one another. All right. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, Scorpios, I hope that the reading is helpful for you as you navigate this energy for this week.